Hello, welcome to Grief Support That Works. I'm Joe McRogers and today I am combining my experience in mental health crisis work and my knowledge about grief support to explore the following three critical nuances in grief work. When someone we care for dies, there are three guarantees. Number one, there is now and always will be a before and after date in our life. Number two, the primary question of who am I now with this grief in my life is present. And number three, how do I place this loss into my future? Let me know your thoughts about these three quintessential grief questions in the comments. So now over to mental health. In the world of persistent, pervasive, and personal mental health crisis work, a mental status exam would reveal to the practitioners the depth and the breadth of each bout of unwellness. There are four dimensions of a person's orientation that could help to assess the level of response that's required. First, let's look at those four elements. Time, place, situation, and person. Time. Can you name the day, month, and year? Place. Where are you now? Situation. Who is chasing you? What are your stresses and what brought you here? And person. Who are you? I have had people in mental health crises respond with the following answers. Time. The time they can be off by the wrong year, by decades, or by centuries. Place. I've had people answer that they're from another planet or a different dimension. Situation. I've been told that the Queen of England is after me. Person. I am Christ and I can walk across the lake. Clearly, each of these answers requires acute and intensive care. Now, let me also say that I have had the privilege of knowing each of these people outside of their mental health crisis, and I have watched them return to wellness and become fully and happily oriented to time, place, situation, and most importantly, person. This is now where grief enters. Oriented to time. Grief involves the past, the present, and the future all in one breath all the while being frozen in a very surreal state. Each time we awaken, we start our grief all over again. Was any event now landmarked as before or after the diagnosis, the accident, the hostel, the DNR? Time no longer holds the same values. Time is distorted, days may blur together, anniversaries of loss might bring heightened emotional responses right back to the day of the death. The concept of time can either feel accelerated, slowed down, or both all at the same time. Next, we can talk about oriented to place. When we're grieving, nowhere feels familiar or comforting. There are now suddenly rooms in our home that we can't enter. There are places, restaurants, trips that we can no longer go on. The grocery store, for heaven's sakes, is even triggering. And you may feel as though you aren't of this world. Next, oriented to the situation, what the heck has happened? How did I get to this place in my life? I have no past that doesn't hurt or that I don't question, and I have no concept of the future. I have no lived experience to draw from. This is all new and all so unfamiliar. And finally, oriented to person. Now, the most telling of disorientation in a mental status exam is person. It is fair to say that losing one's identity is the largest dissolution of person. Even if you have the date wrong or you don't know why you're talking to a social worker or that you don't know why you've been taken to a hospital or why you're in custody with the police, if you can no longer identify who you are, the implications are far more urgent and critical. Orientation to person is the last element of orientation usually to be lost. It typically only shows up in severe situations of dementia or psychotic states. But here is the critical confusion of grief. This is the question of who am I now with this loss in my life? Grief will challenge and erase who we knew ourselves to have been or who we are becoming.
How do you now identify? Are you still a mother or brother or wife or aunt or friend or father or colleague after this death? Do you still have a faith that served you? Do you still have empathy for others? Do your passions still hold value? Do you still feel life is worth living? Do you believe joy can be part of your future? These questions are core to our identity. Grief robs us of these. And then this question runs into the final grief question of how do I bring this loss forward with me into my future? How will I integrate this into my life? How do I move on? Do I move on? Do I deserve to move on? Why are all of my relationships changing? Why do I now need different boundaries? These questions have major implications for how we carry this grief into our future. We are so quick to dismiss, diminish, and avoid grief. So in today's video, I wanted to lend some validation to what you might be experiencing while you are grieving, why it is so confusing. I couldn't help but think of these questions from my crisis work days. This state of disorientation is why grief is so confounding. Grief challenges, alters, and blurs time, place, situation, and importantly, person. So please, self-compassion, patience, steadfastness is required. Also take into account that not only is your heart broken, but your brain is also temporarily broken. So please know that the tasks of grief will be challenging. Now this is my own humble theory and I would be curious to learn your thoughts. So please leave me a comment, educate me, what have I missed? Making this video has inspired me to consider that my next workshop might be about self-compassion while grieving. Please let me know in the comments if this is something that would interest you and I'll look at creating this. While you sort out your normal, natural grief confusion, I send you kind thoughts, kind words, and a kind heart. If you want support with your grief, please explore all of my services to find which one is right for you. Take good care. Thank you.